hello apologies for not being around for a while and making any videos i had some stuff going on but anyway um hopefully i'm back now so in my last video a while ago i looked at the forces that hold the universe together and so in this video i want to take a look at what exactly those forces are holding together so what's the universe made of let's find out more more specifically in this video i'm going to be looking at quarks and their relationship with the matter of the universe. Okay, well, let's start off with matter. This is the stuff that makes up much of the visible universe. Matter is made from atoms, and atoms are made from protons and neutrons collected in the nucleus, and electrons in a sort of cloud around the nucleus. If we look more closely at the protons and neutrons, we find that they are in turn made of even more fundamental particles called quarks. But what are quarks? Quarks are part of the standard model of particle physics, which we can see here. And there are six types of quark, and we call the different types flavours. The six flavours are up, down, top, bottom, strange and charm. Up, down and strange are grouped together as they are lighter, and the top, bottom and charm are grouped together as they're heavier. And before we go any further, we need to have a quick talk about particles. We tend to think of particles as little blobs of matter. After all, we are made of particles. At the quantum level, however, particles aren't really blobs of matter at all. They are energy fluctuations in the fields that pervade all of reality. And that energy fluctuation has a specific value. This energy is different for the different types of particles. And it's this energy that kind of gives the particles their mass. It's a lot more complicated than that, but you get the general idea. I speak at much greater length about these fields in my vacuum decay video, and I'll put a link to that somewhere if you want to find out more. So, back to quarks. And what are the properties of quarks? Well, like most particles, quarks have a number of fundamental properties that distinguish them from other particles. Think of them a little like the distinguishing features of a particular particle. So we've already mentioned mass or energy. Quarks also have an electrical charge. And the charge of a quark is either minus a third or plus two thirds. Three of the quarks have a charge of minus a third, those being the down, strange and bottom quarks. And the other three quarks have a plus two thirds charge. It's this charge that goes into providing the charge of the particles made up from quarks. The proton with a charge of plus one is made from two up quarks and one down quark. Adding up the electrical charges, we can see that it gives an overall charge of plus one. The neutron on the other hand, which has no overall charge, is made from two down quarks and one up quark. Again, adding the electrical charges together, we can see that there's no overall electrical charge. Quarks also have what's known as colour charge. This isn't really anything to do with actual colour, because at the sizes we're talking about, the concept of colour doesn't exist. Colour charge, though, is a neat way of describing a kind of interaction that the quarks undergo. And it's the colour charge that underpins a quark's ability to come together and form particles. So more about that in a little while. Like all other particles, quarks also have spin. I don't want to get into this too deeply because it gets very quantum again. Just think of spin as another fundamental property of a particle, like electrical charge. The particles don't really spin like this, though this is just another convenient way of thinking about it. All quarks are spin a half particles, so they can have a spin of plus a half or minus a half. But what does spin a half mean? Well, if we think about spin as being actual spin of particles, it's not really, but let's just imagine. And imagine the planet Earth. The Earth has to rotate around 360 degrees until it looks the same again. This will be equivalent to a spin one particle. Spin a half in terms of the Earth, it would mean that the Earth would have to rotate through 720 degrees or two full rotations before it comes back to the initial configuration. Like I said, quantum. The best visualization of this I've seen is a video by Lloyd Watt 60. So I'll put a link in the description 
for anyone who wants a better visualization than I can do. So those are the properties of quarks. But what about their interactions? Well, firstly, they can undergo the weak interaction. By emitting other particles, quarks can change their flavor. In my fundamental forces video, I go into this in more detail, but this is the way that protons can turn into neutrons and vice versa. Quarks change their flavor. Quarks are also subject to gravity because they have mass, sort of, and electromagnetism because they have an electrical charge. However, it's the quarks interaction with the strong force that allows them to join together to make larger particles and ultimately the particles that form much of the visible universe. When quarks join together to form larger particles, they mainly either join in twos or threes. Two quarks together form a meson and three quarks make a baryon. And before we discuss how they do this, we now really need to talk about that colour charge. As already mentioned, this really isn't anything to do with real colour. But each quark has a colour and each antiquark has an anticolour. The colour charges on the quarks are denoted as red, green and blue. And the corresponding antiquarks have anticolours, anti-red, anti-green and anti-blue, which picking the opposite colours on the colour wheel gives them these colours. Also, the colour of a quark is independent of its flavour. This means that I can have up quarks which are red, green and blue and up antiquarks, which are anti-red, anti-green and anti-blue. And this colour charge is really important when it comes to quarks forming larger particles. When quarks form other particles, the resultant colour of that particle must be zero. This is called colour neutrality. It's also why colour is a useful way of thinking about this property. Just like with light, if I mix red, green and blue, I get white light. This means that the colour of the particles made by quarks must always be white or neutral. First of all, then, let's think about mesons. These are made from a quark and an antiquark pair, and there are lots and lots and lots of them. Most of them don't last for long at all, mere fractions of a second. Two quarks can't form a particle because it wouldn't give colour neutrality. However, a quark and an antiquark can give colour neutrality. For instance, a red quark and an anti-red antiquark would still give a colour charge of zero or a white colour. And there are two main forms of meson. The first are flavourless. And here I do wish they'd not chosen a word that the Brits and the Americans spelled differently. So please don't tell me in the comments that I've spelled it wrong. Anyway, Flavourless mesons are made from a quark and an antiquark of the same flavour. So for instance, an up quark and an up antiquark. And again, they would have to have opposite colours to give colour neutrality. So a red up quark and an anti-red up antiquark will form a flavourless meson. The flavours cancel themselves out. The other kind of meson are flavoured. This happens when two quarks of a different flavour form a meson. Again, there are lots and lots of these, but an example is the strange D meson, made from a charm quark and a strange antiquark, with a colour charge again requiring net neutrality. Baryons are larger particles, and they're made from three quarks. Again, there are lots and lots of these. For instance, there are sigma baryons. These all contain two quarks that are either both up, both down, or one of each. The third quark that makes up the sigma baryons is one of the remaining four quarks. So there are lots and lots of possible combinations. And this is just one family of baryons. Now the colour charge has to be neutral. And so because baryons are made from three quarks, there must be one red, one green and one blue to give that colour neutrality. The list of baryons is just huge. But most of them have really short lifetimes, lifetimes which are tiny fractions of a second. There are, however, two baryons that are mainly stable. These are the proton and the neutron. The proton is made from two up quarks and one down. This particle is stable and has an average lifespan 
well, a half-life really, but an average lifespan of about 1.67 times 10 to the 34 years. This is many, many times longer than the current age of the universe. Then we have neutrons. These are made from two down and one up quark. Now, free neutrons, free neutrons have a half-life of about 15 minutes, but they do then decay into protons. This is because everything in the universe wants to be at its lowest energy state. And because neutrons are a little more massive than protons, they have more energy. By a neutron turning into a proton, it will achieve a lower energy state. Neutrons bound up in atomic nuclei can be either stable or unstable, depending on the element. Now, all of what I've been saying so far seems to suggest that the colour charge on a quark is constant throughout a quark's existence. But that isn't the case. Quarks change their colour constantly. And this is due to the way that they interact with each other. Unlike most other particles, quarks are able to join with other quarks to form larger particles. In fact, because the colour charge needs to be neutral, we don't find quarks on their own as that would break colour neutrality. To join together and form larger particles, quarks are subject to the strong interaction. The strong interaction is mediated by another particle called the gluon. Again, I talk more about these in my fundamental forces video. When quarks combine to form particles, they do so by exchanging gluons. Now, gluons have both a colour and an anticolour, and so by exchanging gluons, quarks change their colour and maintain colour neutrality. Let me give you an example. Imagine I have three quarks, red, blue and green. The blue quark here could exchange a gluon with the green quark. The gluon would be blue anti-green, and this would turn the blue quark green, and the green quark would turn blue. That's not very easy to say. Or the green quark could emit a green anti-red gluon. That would turn the green quark red and would also turn the red quark green. Quarks will be exchanging these gluons all the time. And as long as the colour charge remains zero, everything's fine. This then gives us a total possible of six types of gluons. It will be expected that there isn't a green anti-green gluon or a blue anti-blue gluon, but there kind of is. This, however, gets very deeply into the realm of maths. And since I'm very much not a mathematician, I'm not going to attempt to mangle the maths. But there are, in fact, eight types of gluon. We think of protons as being formed from three quarks, two up and one down. And while that's true, it isn't the whole story. And the rest of the story is very, very much quantum, as you'd expect. Protons are made up of two up and one down quark, but much, much more. These three quarks are actually called the valence quarks and are what typically contribute to the mass of the proton. But there are other quarks and these are called C quarks. Now, this is a bit of a simplification of what's actually happening, but it's a nice way to think about it. As I've mentioned in a previous video, Particles are actually quantum fluctuations in the fields that pervade the universe. And here we can see a quantum fluctuation in the up quark field. And if this reaches a certain energy, it will be an up quark. There are also antiparticles which have the opposite energy as we can see here. There are also, however, virtual particles. Now these virtual particles don't quite have the correct level of energy and can be created out of nothing. They're created in pairs, a quark and an anti-quark. And because they're created in pairs that way, the overall energy is still zero. These then will usually annihilate each other very shortly after creation. And it's these virtual quarks that form those C quarks. And these quarks are constantly being created and destroyed within the proton. Particle pairs constantly popping into and out of existence. The universe is very strange when you get to the quantum level. So is that it for quarks then? Well, not quite. There are in addition, very elusive and rare tetraquarks and pentaquarks. 
tetraquarks are made from two quarks and two antiquarks. In that way, the colour charge can be maintained. There are many variant possibilities, but they all seem to possess one quark antiquark pair, which are both the lighter quark types, up, down, or strange, and one quark antiquark pair that are all heavier, top, bottom, or charm. Though this doesn't seem to be a rule, and some tetraquark discoveries have broken this. We've actually found several tetraquarks. For instance, in 2007, the Bell experiment in Japan reported charm, anti-charm, down, anti-up tetraquarks. Since then, a number of others have been discovered, including a charm, charm, anti-charm, anti-charm tetraquark, discovered in 2020 at CERN, and a charm, anti-charm, up, anti-strange tetraquark, also discovered at CERN in 2021. And finally, we have the pentaquarks. These are exotic and so far none have been found in nature, only those that human experimentation have produced. In order to maintain colour neutrality, they have to be formed of one quark of each of the colours, red, green and blue, then a fourth quark of any colour and an antiquark of the anticolour of the fourth quark. So for instance, we could have red, blue and green quarks and a blue quark and then an anti-blue antiquark. So these have to be made of four quarks and one antiquark. A number of pentaquarks have been discovered, including up, up, down, charm, anti-charm, and up, down, strange charm, anti-charm. And I think I've said the word quark quite enough for one day. Well, that concludes our little visit into the strange world of quarks. I hope to make some more videos in the not too distant future. But for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.